Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. Today we are going to discuss discourse analysis. This lecture is a part of your paper communications research. Introduction. In this lecture you will learn about discourse analysis as a research method. Discourse means a discussion or a conversation and discourse analysis means analyzing the discussion or a conversation. The discussions can be available in the form of written text or any other recorded form. Discourse analysis as a method in social sciences and its allied branches is employed to gather communication text for analysis. It focuses on the construction of language in text and takes into account the relationship between language and the socio-culture context in which it is used. Discourse analysis also involves the ways in which language represents different worldviews and provides different understandings. This means that discourse analysis involves reflecting how multiple worldviews are produced through the discourse of both the spoken and written text. Discourse analysis is used as a method in a variety of disciplines including media and communication studies as well as the studies of culture. In these disciplines, discourse analysis involves studying various knowledge sources and deconstructing the language attached to a certain phenomena. According to Phillips and Jorgensen, in 2002, discourse analysis involves an examination of patterns people's utterance follow when they take part in different domains of social life. In media and communication studies, discourse analysis is used as a method to examine how media texts are composed and the relation between discourse, participants and the philosophical ideas. Discourse analysis has its roots in the role that language plays in attaching meanings to text and the way we perceive the world. This method was first introduced in research studies by Zeling Harris in 1952 to examine the relationship between speech and writing. Harris pointed out two significant features of discourse analysis. One is the analysis of language and secondly the relationship between linguistic and non-linguistic behavior. Harris examined the language to describe how the elements of language are distributed in text and how these elements are combined across different patterns of text. The primary purpose of discourse analysis for Harris was to determine how language becomes meaningful for those who use it. This means that in discourse analysis, the analyst is devoted towards examining what language is used for. Functions of language Whenever a conversation written or spoken is analyzed, the researcher looks at the language being used. The underlying ideas of the conversation and the way these ideas are expressed through language. 
Discourse analysis is used to determine how ideas develop and change over a period of time in different contexts. How the ideas are socially constructed through the way people think, speak and experience the social world around them is done through discourse analysis. Analyzing discourse is therefore a form of collaborative social action wherein the users of language jointly collaborate in the production of meanings and inferences during communication through spoken and written conversation. According to Brown and Yule in 1983, the analysis of discourse is necessarily the analysis of language in use. To better understand how language functions is fundamental for our understanding of the relationship between what is conversed and the meanings given to the language. In order to understand and attach meanings to some conversation, the context under which this conversation takes place is important. The context can be physical context, social context, mental worlds or roles of the people involved in the conversation. These contexts highly influence what is being said as well as how people interpret what is said. An example of this form entails a chat between two students sitting in a classroom. This conversation may have some meaning for these two students but it may also carry some other meanings for other students around who are not part of chat and also something different to the instructor in the class. Such linguistic contacts in terms of communicating through language has an impact on the intended meanings, the production of discourse and also on how others may extract meaning out of this linguistic discourse, the interpretation of discourse. Meaning to the language are, therefore, created through interactions realized mutually by those interacting, the speaker and the listener in spoken communications and by writer and the reader in written communications. Two forms of discourse analysis can be derived from the, our discussion. These are transactional and interactional discourses. Transactional discourse involves expression of content. This form of analysis has received particular attention from linguist, linguist, philosopher and psycholinguist. They frequently accept language as a means to communicate, however, they also assume that language is used for transmitting information. Language used to communicate information based on facts or propositions is called primarily transactional language. Primarily transactional language is a form of communication where there is the transference of information which in the mind of the speaker. The mode of communication in such a situation is message oriented. However, the researcher has to make sure that correct information is conveyed to the listener or the audience. The other is interactional discourse which involves expressing social relations and personal attitudes. Sociologist, social linguist, anthropologist and communication theorist have been concerned with interactional discourse wherein they use language to form 
social relationships and preserve it. Sociologists and anthropologists have emphasized that common interactions among people symbolizes the interpersonal use of language. What is primarily at issue in interactional discourse is sharing a common point of view. Thus, while the transactional discourse uses language to convey information, the interactional discourse uses language to form and preserve social relationships. Data used in discourse analysis can be categorized into various forms such as found data, naturally occurring data, data obtained through interviews and data obtained through participant observation. Found data includes the already existing data. Collecting existing data is easier for the analyst than to collect other forms of data. However, this form of data requires the researcher to follow certain steps prior to collecting it. Analysis most often find it difficult to reduce the existing data to a limited measure. Common examples of existing data include newspaper articles, official documents and audio-visual contents. Analysts can sometimes obtain a large mass of data then can be analyzed. However, what is important here is the fact that the analyst only makes a suitable selection out of the mass of available existing data. This means that only data which potentially holds significance for the research and which provides background information must be selected. Naturally occurring data includes a conversation between two or more people. It refers to any exchange of words regardless of whether the researcher witnessed it or not. This conversation can be achieved in the form of existing data. An example of this kind entails an analyst choosing any electronic data for analysis, especially from a website. However, this data has a drawback in the sense that this data may lack the context such as the time of recording. Also, it has been found that electronic data has certain ethical issues concerning the anonymity of those portrayed in the e-data and the permission to use it. The commonly used method of data collection for discourse analysis is probably through interviewing. In interviewing method, the focus is not on the persons involved in a conversation, but on the conversation itself, which is the focus of discourse analysis. Stephanie Taylor in 2013 has argued that interview for the purpose of research is different from the everyday interactions and exchange of words in various contexts, such as television, interrogation of politicians, interview for job recruitment, patients consulting doctors, etc. Discourse analysts rely heavily on an interview conducted in a friendly environment. However, there are some who rely on recordings and transcripts of interviews conducted by others. In such situation, the analysis is done not only of the responses of the participants but also on the kind of questions posed by the interviewer. The former is a kind of semi-structured interview where the interviewer has a prepared list of questions. Interviewer repeatedly conducts interviews from the same participants for gathering rich data. They use audio recording devices to record the responses of the participants. But recording through video recording device can provide 
additional information especially during group interviews where it exactly shows who said what the last is data obtained through participant observation obtaining data through participating in the activities of people and in the group under study holds significance in anthropological literature especially in ethnography participant observation is used by the analyst in a variety of ways such as communicating through feelings identifying the persons understanding the terms used during conversations observing events and so on in discourse analysis the focus during participant observation is not on the activities of the members of the group but on the verbal conversations between them the analysis of discourse does not involve a single approach but a number of different approaches in general there are no standard approaches but diverse ways of how to start the analysis of this course as such there are six steps of writing or presenting this course analysis these are surface elements objects actors in the text expression through words discursive strategy and ideological standpoints The first step is analyzing surface elements. In this step of discourse analysis, the analyst focuses on the structural features of the text such as date of publication, electronic media, where it was published, author and the length of the article. these surface elements of the text help in finding what is at stake it also helps in the overall analysis of the subject under study theorists such as van dyck exploring the organization of the text providing a deeper insight into the text the second step is analyzing object in this step the analyst identifies the discursive object discursive objects are the themes that are constructed within the text at this stage the focus of the analyst is on how realities are constructed in relation to the role they play in bringing about a change discursive objects are both covert and overt identifying this discursive objects helps the researcher to understand the role of discourses since they are linked to the focus of the research the third step is the analysis of actors in the text which requires tracing key actors and how they appear within the text text plays a key role in defining the identities of the actors In media and communication discourse perspectives on shaping the meaning of the text by one actor may be dominating compared to others This is called framing power This framing power among the analyst in relation to some problem is highly influential in discourse analysis The fourth is the analysis of expressions through words which involves language and rhetoric. The former includes particular aspects of language such as writing style, informal and conversational. It also involves terms used for representing a certain reality, vocabulary The latter involves using language efficiently through tools such as symbols, citing trustworthy sources and other rhetorical figures employed in the text. In this kind of analysis, the constructions of the analyst are concealed. The fifth is discursive strategy. 
discursive strategic guides the analyst about the ways of choosing and exploiting linguistic resource in order to achieve the objectives of discourse in an efficient way. In doing so, the analyst requires some vague strategies such as framing, which involves organizing discourses according to a certain perspective. There are two types of devices to analyze the discourse. One is framing device which suggests how to use and interpret metaphors, catch phrases and depictions. The other is reasoning device which justifies the further course of action on the framing devices. The last is the ideological standpoint. It is always crucial to clarify what one means by ideology. An ideology is typically an arrangement of ideas based on norms and facts shared by people to shape their understanding about some issue. It is assumed that ideas are obtained and communicated through interaction, verbal or written. This implies that ideology is intrinsically a part of discourse which affects the way meanings are constructed out of the discourses. Ideological standpoint allows the analyst to select and represent objects, actors, language and strategies that are used in the discourse analysis. Ethics means rules, principles or codes that regulate our interaction with others and guide throughout the research process. The common ethical consideration in discourse analysis include acknowledgement, informed consent, gained access and confidentiality. Acknowledgement means attributing the authors whose work is used in writing discourse analysis. This prevents from plagiarism which is one of the major ethical considerations in any research and across diverse fields. Informed consent involves researcher asking for the approval from participants whose discussions or discourses are being analyzed. This consent can be received through two ways, either formally in writing or orally in an informal way. This consent is received prior to actually obtaining any information from the participants. Gaining access means researcher is accepted as part of the group involved in the discourse and is allowed to actively engage in the discourse among the members of the group. Confidentiality involves ensuring the participants of keeping their personal information a secret and that only the researcher will have access to the information provided by participants. Under the principle, the researcher is under an obligation to refrain from making public anything related to participants through publications. We initially discussed discourse analysis as a research method. Tracing the origin of the method, we have discussed the role of language in discourse analysis and the relationship between the linguistic and non-linguistic patterns of discourse. What are the functions of language? In discourse analysis was discussed through two forms of discourses that is transactional and interactional. This method utilizes various kinds of data. What are the kinds of data and what techniques are used to collect data were also discussed. The analysis of the discourse involves several steps. These steps were discussed in details. Throughout the process of discourse analysis, there are certain ethical considerations to follow. We also pointed out four important ethical issues. 
This lecture will guide the students who engage in discourse analysis in various disciplines especially in communication research. Do attempt the question in the self-evaluate quadrant. For further reading suggestions please refer to the third quadrant. Thank you.